right, what's up you guys? So I recently did a short not too long ago um, because one of my subscribers said that they, like the PA career, PA profession is no longer for them. Um, they've been like doing this for about three years now with no kind of end in sight. And so, um, you know, some of you may be in that same boat, similar boat, trying to figure out like, okay, should I do this? Should I continue with this or go on to something else? So if that is you, this video is for you. So let's get into the video right now. What's up you guys, it's Adana and welcome back to my channel. So again, like I said, um, somebody stated the PA career is no longer for them, which is fine, okay? It is okay because it is not for everybody. And I just wanna like put that out there. And it's okay that it's not for everybody because at the end of the day, um, you know, each of us has our own path to follow. But if you really believe and, and truly desire, like if you really believe that this career is for you and truly desire to get into this career, um, I think that there are like some things that you like kind of need to look at and like keep in mind and, and be aware of. So yes, the path is not easy, especially if you're coming into this like secondary or you've made some like really poor decisions in your early like undergraduate years because all of those courses um, are compounded into your prerequisite requirements. And so that's really what takes a lot of the time in getting into PA school is figuring out, okay, like how am I going to overcome this low GPA? And so in this video, I just wanted to kind of give you guys so a few things that you should really be looking at, like two or three things that you should be looking at um, when trying to decide if you still want to be a PA, okay? And so uh, the first thing is like if you've already like gone through one or two cycles like and you still haven't gotten like an interview or anything like that, it's really important that you do a, a true self-assessment of your your PA stats and, and your application. And what I mean by that is like, not just you looking at it because a, a lot of times like we can lie to, we lie to ourselves. Like as human beings, like, you know, we, we do things and say things and lie to ourselves because, you know, we want, um, we want to feel good and we don't, we don't want to feel bad. And so <laughs> with that being said, it's, we're not the best barometer of like, where we're going or, or what we should be doing, right? So I think it's important for you to have somebody else look at your stats, um, maybe have multiple people look at your stats, maybe reach out to an admissions counselor that can like help guide you in terms of like, what it is that I should be doing or what areas am I lacking in? Um, and then the next thing that you should do is implement that. Now, obviously you need to really be realistic in your time period, right? And so I'm saying this like, no, don't think like, okay, so I've gone through my stats and now I'm going to do this and get into pay school next year. It doesn't always work like that. And you really have to be able to be realistic with yourself and understand and know for yourself if that is okay for you. Is it okay for me, where I'm at in my life, to have to do three or four more years of schooling, like really essentially go back to school again because I'm also working and trying to like support my life and maybe my family. Is it okay for me to do that and take that time out to get to this PA career that I feel called to? Or is this really not for me? And you have to be willing to like make those hard decisions and make those choices. Um, and then once you've like looked at your, like done an assessment, looked at your life, started to implement those things, then now it's time for you to apply, but apply smartly, smartly. Yeah. Apply with with intent. So that's when you do all your, your research and you find the schools that maybe look at the last 30, 40, 45, 90, 60 credits, right? You look at your developing programs that may have a little bit more leniency in some of the things that they're requiring in terms of like their healthcare hours because maybe you weren't able to get as many healthcare hours because you've been going to school. So you really have to tailor make this application process for you and your stats. Um, and the best way to do that is by just doing your research. It's gonna be a lot of work, you guys. It's not gonna be easy. This path to becoming a PA is not always easy. It's easy for some, but for others who may have had some missteps, it's not always easy. But if you do feel called to it, it is really worth it in the end, okay? So just a little bit of you know Sunday morning motivation for you. Because I don't want anybody to give up on their goals, um, and I really want you guys to to succeed and thrive. Um, but the best way to do that is first by being honest with yourself, and then actually doing the work. You know, not being lazy, not like trying to like skimp on the things that you need to do. 
actually do the work that's going to get you to the point that you're trying to go, which is ultimately the PA career or, you know, some other career if that is what you so choose. All right. If you guys have any other questions for me, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Adon the PA and on Instagram at Get That's the University. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.